Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna cover making query sets to the database and working with that data so we can do things like filtering items down, sorting this data, and querying things by parent-child relationships along with a few other methods that we'll cover. So before we get into it, I just wanted to go over the basics of how all this works and show you the Django documentation and where you can actually find all this. So as I go through this video, I'd highly recommend you pull up this documentation and actually read into the details of what I'm covering. So this link will be in the description so you can just grab that from there. And let's just get into this diagram that I made. So in here, we're making a simple query for the customer's table. So we wanna pull out all the customers in the database. So we have this variable, which is gonna hold a return value and we have our customer model. So this is simply the customer model name. So whatever you named your model, just make sure you specify that. And we're gonna access the objects attribute. Once we get that objects attribute, we can simply use the dot all method and this will return all the customers in the database. So we're gonna start with all and then we'll go into getting single items filtering that data and I won't cover exclude, but I do wanna just show that in here. So that's just another way of filtering things down. So let's just go ahead and go to our command prompt here and we'll actually start making our queries from here. So to do this, let's just go ahead and run python manage.py shell. And I'm in my project file, so make sure you're in there when you start. And what this does is it gives us an interactive shell to actually start working with our data. So this is a lot like the Python shell, but because we did manage.py, it allows us to do things the Django way and actually query our database. And before I start making those queries, I actually made a little cheat sheet for you guys that I wanna cover. And all this is is simply a list of commands that I'll be covering right now. And as I type them in the command prompt here, I want you guys to have something you can actually look back to and reference rather than having to pause the video at certain times. So this will be in the source code and it's just a better way to see things because it is styled and in color. So um, we'll be going back to this, but you can find it in accounts and queries demo.py. So it's within our app here. So I'll just go ahead and move this to the side and close out our little diagram there and open up the command prompt. Okay, so let's go ahead and start making our first queries. And before we can do that, we'll actually need to make a quick import here so the shell knows that we can work with these models. So in our app called accounts and models.py, we'll just import all of these by doing from accounts.models import, and we wanna import all of them, so we'll just do star, and now we can start working with them. So let's start with our first query for all the customers in the database, and we're gonna use this one right here. So we'll set the customers variable, and that'll be customer.objects.all. And what this will do is it'll set the variable of customers to a query set that we get back. So let's just print that out and we'll do customers. And we get back a query set, which is basically a dictionary of objects that we can start working with. So we can actually uh, go to any one of these items and access all these attributes or methods that they may have. So let's say we wanna get the first or last item in this dictionary. So we have our first customer right here that we can get by just doing customer.objects.first. And to show you that, because we already have the customer's query set, we can just do customers.first. And that'll return back Peter. So that's the first customer. And to get the last one, you just simply use the last method. So let's say we actually want to grab a specific customer. We know us uh, an attribute that we wanna query it by, like an ID or a name. To do that, we just need to use the get method. So same concept, but in this uh, in this case, we're gonna do customer one is gonna be customer.objects.get and we're gonna do, we're gonna go by the name. So name is equal to Peter Piper. Okay, so we have that customer set in the variable and let's just make sure everything is working. We'll do customer one and we'll actually wanna print that. So let's go back here, print. Okay, so we get back Peter. Let's say we wanna know a specific attribute. What's his email? So if we do email, we get back Peter's email and there's a funny pound sign there, but um, we can access each attribute by just using the dot notation and the name of the attribute. So in this case, 
we can only return back one item and it's not a query set. So there's an issue with this. If there's a, another Peter Piper in the database, that's gonna bring up an error for us because can only it can only return back one item. So in this case, let's just do that same method here where we do customer one, and that's gonna be equal to customer dot objects dot get. And instead of the name, we're gonna search by the ID. And right here we can see that Peter's ID was two. So we can do two and then print that customer and it'll give us back the same name right there. So now let's say we wanna take this a step further and query orders, but we don't want all the orders in the database. We just want uh, Peter's orders. We wanna know everything or every order Peter's placed. We could use something like the filter method here and say something like order.objects.filter and then run a filter to find only Peter's orders. But we can actually reverse this and query it downwards. So how this would work is we would use a related object set, which basically lets us query something by a customer and just chain it downwards. So I drew up a little example where I coded one up here and I made these two models, just a parent and a child model. And they're related by this foreign key. And in this case, what we do is we get the parent, we do parent model .objects first, So we just find the first one in the database. And to get the children, all we need to do is go parent dot child model. And you'll notice that these are capitalized, like the C and the M. But when you're doing the related set, you just do the model name in all lowercase underscore set dot all. And that's how you can actually access that. So let's just do customer one. And it'll actually set it to a variable. So orders is going to be equal to um, in our case, customers one, uh, not customers, just customer. So customer one dot, and then our model name is order with a capital O. So we're gonna do order, and that's gonna be lowercase, underscore set dot all. And this should return back all of Peter's orders. So now if we just print orders, we should see three different orders here. One, two, and three. So that's how we're able to do it without having to filter um, using the filter method. And that's kind of a cool Django way of doing this and comes in very handy when you're trying to pull up certain information on someone. And one more thing before I get to the filter method, I actually wanna show you how we can reverse that chain and actually go upwards. So in this case, it's top down, but let's say we wanna get an order and instead of going from the customer to the orders, we actually want to figure out some information on the customer that's related to this order. So I just got the first customer and at this point, I actually don't remember who placed their first order. So let's figure that out. Let's just do order.customer.name. And that was actually Peter. So um, that worked out perfectly. So we were able to take this order object that we got, go to this customer object, which now takes us up here and we can start making queries as if we were in this model right here. So we just went to customer dot name right there. So that's how we're able to do that. And we can, again, do the same thing with the email or let's just say phone. And that's how we're able to go backwards from a child model to a parent model. Now let's actually run a filter. So I'm gonna go through my examples again and we're gonna use this one right here. So we wanna get all the products and get only the products with the value of outdoor for the category section. So let's just set a variable and we'll just do product dot objects dot filter. And if we don't wanna filter anything, we don't have to, so we can just run filter and it'll act as if it was this all method. And if we print it, and I wanna do this just to see how the filter actually works, we get back three products, barbecue grill, dishes, and balls. So let's actually run a filter now. And we made the original query so in this case, I'll just reset the value of products and we'll do category is gonna be equal to, and I believe it has to be a capital O and capital D. So if you're following along exactly, make sure the spelling's right. And we'll do out door. Okay, so now if I filter these products or if I query them, we only get back two. So that just removed any product without the category of outdoor and filtering, you can actually do things like chaining them. So you can do things like categories outdoor and name is equal to um, whatever we want our name to be. So 
you can actually add as many values as you want to this filter. So that's pretty cool. Now let's actually sort this data. So in this case, uh, we'll, we'll sort the products and we'll use this method here. So we'll just use the all method instead of filter. And all we need to do is tag on order underscore by and what value do we want to order it by? So let's just say we want to order it by the ID. So if we do this, we're now ordering by the ID. So if we print that and do products, because we're already ordering from least to greatest, the order is the same. So ball and barbecue grill dishes, everything looks the same. So in that case, what we want to do is we want to reverse the order and to reverse an order, you can do this again by any attribute and you just do a dash right there within these uh, quotes here. And if we print that again, now print the products, you can see it's reversed. So now balls on the very left, dishes and barbecue grill. So the last thing we'll cover is going to be the many to many relationship query. So how can we query um, all products with a tag of sports? So to do this, again, I have it listed right here as number 10. We can do, I'll actually pull up the products here and we'll use all, or sorry, filter. So to do this, tag is related. I just want to show the relationship here really quick. Tag is related to product by a many to many field. So it's a little different than just going up one level. We're going to have to do tags. So the attribute that we're filtering by underscore underscore because it's a many to many relationship. And then we're going to search the tag name. So we just jumped into this tag and now we're searching by this value. So the tag name is equal to and in this case, we'll say sports with a capital S. And if we print products, we get back one product. So that just said, give us all the products that are related to this specific tag or a tag with this value. So before I close out this video, I actually had somebody make a request and it was to a specific type of query. And I put that down here. So they were asking if I actually wrote the question out here. So if the customer has more than one ball, how would you reflect this in a database? And my answer to this would be normally you wouldn't want to store that in a database because um, if a customer has multiple products, normally you wouldn't want to have to create a new column for every single product that's in there. So you would just want a way to query this information. So I didn't, uh, this isn't the best way. And the first one I just said, um, ball orders. So we queried this customer up here somewhere. So we already have a value. So that's where that's coming from. And just to point that out, it's right here. First customer. We get the customer. We go order underscore set dot filter product underscore underscore name is equal to ball dot count. So that's one way we can do that. But let's say we wanted to, uh, let's say we had a customer profile and we wanted to see all their products and how many times they've ordered each product. So in this case, what I did is I just created an empty dictionary and you'd normally want to do this calculation in some kind of view that you'd set up or a method maybe that the, that you would put onto a model, which we'll cover later. So it'd be model methods that we'll cover. And in that case, what we do here is we have all our all orders dictionary. We loop through all the customer's orders and we say, if that order exist in this dictionary, go ahead and um, add one more. So let's say if, we, if ball was in there and we loop through and there's another one, we would just add another one else go ahead. And so if nothing exists, go ahead and set the attribute of that order name and set it to one. So if it exists, we add one. If it doesn't, we create it. So in this case, what we have in our actual database, what we would get back is a dictionary saying we have ball two and barbecue grill is one. So that brings us back those values. So in the next video, we'll actually start to render this information out in our, in our view and we'll start building out our template. So everything will start being done. All those queries will be taken care of right here.